All right, let's start with the company perspective of gig work. Gig work provides opportunities for millions of people, and without it, countless people would not be able to make ends meet. But like with most things, it's not perfect. In this video, we're going to take a close look if you may be fooling yourself. What's going on everybody? I'm Zach Trice Fast for the Rideshare Guy. And in this video, we're going to talk about common ways that drivers convince themselves that they're getting a better deal than they really are. And we're also going to talk about how to fix those problems. Starting our list is not planning for oh shit moments. It was a sunny but brisk day, and I had been out driving for a few hours and made a few bucks. I had just wrapped up a really solid Grubhub order, and I was looking forward to going home for the evening and relaxing, when my day, and subsequently the following months, went to shit. I'll spare you the specifics, but essentially, my car was fine one moment, and the next moment, it decided that its service was done and that it was an appropriate time to push daisies. There were no warning signs, no check engine lights, or weird sounds. One moment, my car was running smoothly, and the next, it was completely inoperable. This is a perfect example of an oh shit moment. If you do gig work long enough, unfortunately, it's not a matter of if something is going to go wrong, but rather when it's going to go wrong. And this doesn't have to just be car problems. As we all know, sometimes customers lie, and depending on that lie, you could potentially get deactivated. And if you're deactivated, not only did you lose a source of income, but there's a very real chance you may not get the money that you've already earned. Always cash out. Don't leave your money in the apps and hope nothing goes wrong. Something else to consider. It's very possible to get injured on the job. While some apps do offer some sort of compensation if you get hurt on the job, it's not going to be anywhere near the amount that you would usually have earned. If that injury results in medical bills, the apps will not help you pay for them. Lighthearted example. A couple of years back, I was dropping off an order, and I took a couple steps backwards to get my picture. And, unfortunately, I unceremoniously went ass over tea kettle off their porch. Fortunately, other than my pride, nothing was really hurt. But, had that porch been any higher, could have been a different story. More recently, I got into a fight with some flowers, or more specifically, the flower pot. On my way back to the car, I lost my footing and fell against the jagged edge of a ceramic flower pot. This resulted in a blood-stained pair of jeans and a scar that will likely remain the rest of my life. Those are two very small issues in the grand scheme of things. I'm personally aware of two drivers in my market who have slipped on ice and as a result had to get medical treatment. Not only did this rack up medical bills, but as a result, they weren't able to work for an extended period of time. Gig workers don't get any kind of workers' compensation or a car repair fund, so make sure you're setting aside money for when your time inevitably comes. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Here's a couple of ideas on how you can start building a fund. Start setting aside $1 per delivery you make. If your car will get you through 10,000 deliveries, you now have a $10,000 down payment when it's time to purchase a new vehicle. Another option is to set aside a percentage of your earnings at the end of every month. Put that in a separate savings account and don't touch it. Most banks and credit unions will allow you to have multiple savings accounts. So, create a new one and name it the Oh Shit Fund. One more example before we move on. Let's say that you plan on taking 10 orders in a day. Great. Do 11, and then set aside the entire payout of the 11th order. Let me know in the comments what your preferred method of saving money is. If you start planning now, what would have been catastrophic problems will become minor annoyances when they come up. Moving on, the next thing I want to discuss is drivers who think that they have far more money than they really do. At the time of filming this video, gas is about $5 per gallon in my market. Let's say that I've spent most of the day driving and I've racked up 150 miles on my car. That's going to burn about half a tank of gas, and a full tank is going to run me about 50 bucks right now. If the apps showed me that I made $150 that day, some drivers would wrongfully believe that they're $150 richer. Eh, wrong. Many drivers don't factor in that that $150 cost them $25 in gas alone. That's not including how much you'll spend on maintenance as a result of wear and tear. And if you're like me, the added expense of the drive through Buying lunch, coffee, or other random shit adds up quickly. Hopefully, you're starting to see the larger picture, but we're not done. Oil changes, new tires, and general maintenance are all going to eat into your profits. And let's not forget that Uncle Sam's going to want his cut. So... That $150 that I just earned is more like $87 when you factor in gas, expenses, and taxes. Assuming you worked 8 hours, you only made $10.87 an hour after all of your expenses. 
not to bother anymore, is it? Always keep track of your spending and know your costs to operate. That way you know what you're truly making. Our next one might be a touchy subject. How much freedom do gig workers really have? Well, a lot more than your average person. We can choose when we're online, the offers we accept, and the days we work. If our kids have a school function, we don't need a boss's permission to go. Maybe you have an appointment. Just sign off the app, go do what you gotta do, and sign back in later. You'll never be denied vacation time. You can go whenever you want, for as long as you want. So what's the problem? All of those things are huge perks. But I want you to be really honest with yourself. When are the times that you're making the most money? Okay, now, when are your friends and family usually available? For most of us, we're probably busy when they're free and vice versa. Good luck convincing your friends to hit the bar with you at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. As gig workers, we have busy times and we have not so busy times. And if we want to make decent money doing this, we need to work our schedules around those times. Sure, you can spend 10 hours a day Monday through Friday working the apps. Or you can make the same amount of money Thursday through Sunday. Another predicament you might find yourself in is having to work holidays. Sure, some of them are slow, but not all of them. New Year's Eve. When your friends and family are celebrating and getting shitty, you could join them, but you'd miss the busiest drive day of the year. If you like sports, you're going to have to decide if you want to watch the game or if you want to profit off of it. Major sporting events typically mean more money for drivers. What would you choose? Sometimes we're forced to choose if our personal connections or our income is more important. In the interest of my words not getting twisted, I want to be clear. Given the choice between the freedom that gig work provides versus a W-2, I'm taking gig work every time. All right, let's move on to our last topic. There's a better order coming. All right, this is being directed at me just as much as everybody else. I've been guilty of this more times than I care to admit. I think we've all gotten an offer, looked at our phones, and then scoffed at it. It's easy to think, screw that, a better order's coming. But is there really a better order coming? Sure. If you get a no-tip order during peak hours, decline it with a quickness. Actually, if you ever get a no-tip order, decline it with a quickness. Sometimes we can just look at an offer and know it doesn't make sense in that moment. For example, let's say it's the day before Thanksgiving and you get a shop order for one item paying $5 going less than a mile. Chances are that store is going to be slammed and that $5 would take you way too long to earn. Another example. Let's say you get an order paying $12 going four miles, but you know that that place is likely going to have you waiting half an hour. That's a good decline. These are all common sense type of orders. What I'm talking about is meh orders. Let's say it's 3 p.m. on a Tuesday and you get an order paying $5 for four miles and you know your cost to operate. That may be the only offer you see for the next hour. So you need to decide if that makes sense for you financially to take that order or to decline it. I typically have a $6 minimum anything below that, and I generally try to avoid it. But I also know that there's a difference between 2 p.m. on a Tuesday and 6 p.m. on a Sunday. If I get a $5 order during non-peak times on a slow day only going a couple of miles, I'm probably going to take it because the likelihood of me getting another order is slim to none. Having said that, I try to have my schedule down to the point where I'm not out during non-peak times, but I also realize that may not be an option for everybody. Market knowledge takes time, and unfortunately, the best way to learn your market is through trial and error. Additionally, making friends with other drivers is never a bad idea. They may be able to help you avoid some of the headache. But ultimately, you're going to learn best through trial and error. Hell, I didn't start out averaging $3 a mile. I started out averaging a dollar per mile. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is just be realistic about the types of offers your market has depending on the time of day and day of the week. Accept or decline accordingly. If you can, only drive during peak hours when you can cherry pick the best of the best. Your gas money will go far further that way. To summarize, many drivers, myself included, often look at things through rose colored glasses, but it's important to be honest with ourselves. It's easy to look at an offer, then get excited or off put, but it's not as easy to separate our emotions from the work. Saving a little bit of money from every order you take and knowing your cost to operate will make a huge difference in the long run. If you haven't done so yet, please do consider pressing the like button and subscribing to the Rideshare Guy. You can catch my videos here every Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, check out this video where I teach you how to calculate your cost to operate. I'm Zach Trice Fast for the Rideshare Guy.
Take care.